This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all kinds of Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. In last week's video tutorial, we looked at the adjustment brush in Adobe Photoshop's Camera Raw. And today we're going to continue that exploration, but using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, which has much the same controls with a few small nuances which I'll point out as we move along. Here we're working on a photograph that I took in last week's Gasparilla Pirate Invasion Parade in Tampa, Florida. And what we want to do is, I'm very intrigued by this skull on the float with the smoke coming out of its mouth. And I really want to enhance that part of the photograph and make that the center of attention here. We've got a very bright sky. We've got some dark shadows down here. And using the selective adjustment tools within Photoshop Lightroom, or if you're using Photoshop's Camera Raw, you can take care of these types of situations. Now, one place to start when you want to make selective tonal adjustments to only a part of the image is with the tone curve. And with the tone curve, you can grab this little tool right here, which is the targeted adjustment tool. And by clicking on it, your cursor changes to that shape. And you can move over the image and you can drag and adjust the part of the image that you want to change. So in this case, if we wanted to make this skull brighter, we could click right on it and drag upward. And sure enough, it becomes brighter. But look, the entire image is becoming brighter as well. You can see on the right hand side, we're adjusting the darks or nearly the darkest part of the image. In fact, if we hover over one of the eyes, we actually pick up the shadows, which is the darkest part of the image. And we have the same ability to brighten or darken those shadows. However, we're operating on the entire image when we do that. And that doesn't give us the desired result. Likewise, if we go up to the sky and we want to darken the clouds, we notice from the tone curve that we're about to operate on the lights areas, which is the three quarter tones. And sure enough, we can pull the clouds down, but when we do, the rest of the image goes kind of flat. So the targeted adjustment tool does give us some good capabilities, but it doesn't allow us to get specific to the area that we want to adjust. So we'll click Reset to set all the settings back to the default. And we'll try the next panel down, which is the HSL section. And in here, we can go to the luminance. We have three sets of sliders, hue, saturation, and luminance. And once again, we have a targeted adjustment tool. And here, this is a little more specific because as we click and drag, we're operating only on the color range that we select. So in this case, when I click on the skull, I'm getting the oranges and the yellows. And as I start to drag up and down, I'm lightening the skull, but I'm also lightening and darkening everything else in the image that has an orange or a yellow hue to it. So again, that's not quite what I want to do. So we'll click Reset. And it looks like this is going to be a job for the adjustment brush. So I'll click on the adjustment brush right here. And one of the things that we have in Lightroom that we don't have in Photoshop Camera Raw is this word effect right here. And when you double click on this word, all the sliders will zero out. So that's very handy and it's useful to know. Save you some time. Now what we want to do is we want to impact this skull directly by painting on it. And so in our brush, our adjustment brush, we'll load it up. And what we want to do is perhaps brighten this up a bit. So we'll increase the exposure by about 1.5 or so. But we also want to add some clarity to give this some real mid-tone contrasty kind of effect. And in fact, we'll bump the shadows down even though we're bumping up the exposure and that will help to add to the contrast. And finally, we can even add 
some temperature, we can operate on the white balance with our adjustment brush. So I'm going to add a little bit of warmth just by pushing the temperature over to the right up to about, in this case, maybe 24, 25. And that will add a little bit of warmth. And now we can paint right on this skull. And you can see right away that wherever the brush covers, this is the area that's affected, and only that area. And that's the feature of the adjustment brush. So we can go out over here and paint over the smoke as well and really enhance the contrast and bring that smoke out considerably. Now you can see here is the adjustment pin and if you hover over it you can see the mask showing the area where you've painted. Now one thing about this pin and this is unique again to Lightroom is that as you hover over the pin you get a cursor that has a double arrow on it and this is another targeted adjustment tool. So we looked at the targeted adjustment tool for the curves and for the HSL. Now we've got it right here on the adjustment brush. So what can you do? If you click on this pin, you can drag to the left to reduce the effect, or you can drag to the right to increase the effect. And if you look at the sliders, as I'm dragging, when I drag to the left, all the sliders go towards zero. When I drag to the right, all the sliders will go towards the maximum value that we set initially. So you have the opportunity to come in aggressively and then to back off to get the effect that you're looking for. Now let's work on the sky. And because we have a wide open sky with nothing much around it, we could paint with the adjustment brush, but it's going to be an easier job to use the graduated filter. So we click on the graduated filter and once again, we see all the settings left over from before, but we can double click on the word effect. And again, this is Lightroom only, not in camera raw, and it will reset all the sliders to zero. Now we want to darken the clouds. So we'll start with a negative exposure adjustment and we'll go ahead and drag out a graduated filter and we'll put it right over the sky like that. Now the exposure at minus 1.5 is not enough for what we want to accomplish. We need more contrast. That's right, and we need to bump up the highlights a little bit but bring down the shadows. And let's add a lot of clarity. Now we've got a really moody sky. And with that moody sky, we can actually come in here now and once again, if we hover over this pin, we get the hand grabber. And by grabbing the hand, we can move this graduated filter around and position it. But if we hold the Option or Alt key down, we get the targeted adjustment tool again. We can click this and drag to the left. And as we do, you'll see all the sliders in the adjustment panel sliding towards dead center once again. And as we slide to the right, all the sliders approach the maximum value that we set. So you have a targeted adjustment tool available here within the graduated filter just as you do in the adjustment brush. Once again when we're done with the graduated filter we can simply click on it once again and we're back to the basic adjustment panels. So there you have it, a couple of quick tips to use the adjustment brush and the graduated filter not only with a variety of effects, but also with the ability to click and drag right on them and make your adjustments in real time right on your image. The Camera Raw engine within Lightroom and with Adobe Photoshop Camera Raw is quite powerful and it just keeps getting better all the time. I hope that you'll get in there, explore, play around with it, and learn how to use it. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.